Here is the 2024 Toyota Highlander XLE in magnetic gray with the XP package. And I'm gonna compare it against the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Limited in wind chilled pearl. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm gonna go over some pros and cons, the problem that I have, and I'm going to show you the differences in the comparable rivals. Starting with the Highlander, you're going to receive LED headlights and daytime running that integrate into the grill with the gloss black elements that's going to be in the interior and it brushes into the LED fog lights. Both vehicles get eight inches of ground clearance. And when you get into the Grand Highlander, the LED headlights are gonna be pushed back a little bit more so. And the chrome will surround the top part with a enlarged grill with the gloss black elements that brushes into the fog lamp assembly and the satin aluminum will be on the lower. The Grand Highlander is not only longer, but it's also wider and more boxy, whereas the Highlander is a little bit more sporty and round. Both are going to have the same engine, which is a 2.4 liter, four cylinder turbocharged, producing 265 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission. The difference between the two here here is when you get into the Highlander, you're getting 22 over 29 MPGs. The Grand Highlander drops it by one, so 21 over 28. 18 inch comes standard on the Grand Highlander. This is a 20 inch because it's a limited trim and the Platinum trim gets a 20 inch chrome alloy wheels. Because we have the XP package on the Highlander, we're getting the 20 inch wheels. Otherwise, the XLE comes with an 18 inch wheel with the X series badging in the center, XP on the door panel, the gloss black for the side view mirror caps, and you're getting the running boards. Plus on the rear, all the badges get black. Both vehicles can tow up to 5,000 pounds, but when you go into the hybrid for the Highlander, it's gonna drop to 3,500 pounds, being the 2.5 liter four cylinder that has 243 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. That's also going to be paired to a eCVT transmission. Whereas on the GH, the hybrid max gets the 2.4 liter four cylinder turbo hybrid mix with 362 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque. That's still able to tow 5,000 pounds. But if you go into the limited or XLE trim, you're not gonna receive the same power and it's gonna drop to 3,500 pounds. With that configuration, you're also getting a six speed automatic transmission with a variable sport tuned suspension. Whereas on the Highlander, the XSE will get a sport tuned suspension. Both will receive the satin aluminum for the roof rails. The Grand Highlander is going to set up a little bit more so in the rear, giving more of a bold luxury design opposed to the Highlander where it's gonna be more round and sporty. Both trims receive LED taillights. And the problem that I have is you're around $9,000 difference between the two trims and they do the same capabilities. And really the major difference is just increase in length and width. And when you add features onto the Highlander, Lander, it's going to tack on around seven, eight thousand dollars in which you're about a thousand ish difference from the Grand Highlander. So it doesn't necessarily make sense to add the features on the Highlander because then you might as well go for the bigger variant and get all the extra space. Both get power lift gates. 16 cubic feet is going to be behind the third row on the regular Highlander with a storage area here. And you have another little storage compartment right here. Fold down the third row, just like this. That's going to increase cargo to 48.4 cubic feet. And unfortunately, you do have to go into the back door and it's a two part. So you'll pull here, pull this, and it'll fold down flat, increasing cargo to 84.3 cubic feet. Going into the Grand Highlander, also a power lift gate at 20.6 cubic feet, which is 4.6 cubic feet more underneath the floor gets a little bit of storage split fold the third row and that will increase cargo to 57.9 cubic feet which is nearly 10 cubic feet more and the same thing you will have to go into the back and the same thing it's a two-part but just watch because it'll slide folds down flat to give us 97.5 cubic feet of storage which is 13.2 cubic feet more than the Highlander. 10-way power seat adjustment is standard. Softex seats start on this trim as well as heated leather can be optioned on the XSE. 
Whereas on the Grand Highlander, standard 10-way power seat adjustment, limited gets leather seats, heated, ventilated front seats, and memory for the driver on the Grand Highlander. Headroom for the Highlander and leg room. It's not gonna be as wide, but you have just as much space and storage is going to start on the passenger side underneath the Y shape that goes into the 12.3 infotainment screen with wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Put it into reverse and we get a reverse camera. The trajectory does not expand and it doesn't cover up the whole screen. Whereas on the Grand Highlander, 360 degree reverse camera. When you turn that, you have full trajectory for the front and the rear, and you can also turn them on and off. And you can change different camera layouts, put it into park, click the view, and now you got the bird's eye view that'll go all around the vehicle. Standard tri-climate control with the storage in the dashboard with the USB port and some storage sleeves on the passenger side. Two USB ports, wireless charging pad, a large storage area here, the key fob for the Grand Highlander, and the key fob for the Highlander. With USB ports, 12 volt, and another storage area here, you have your driver mode select, and for the snow mode, which when you go into driver mode select, you got sport, normal, and eco, and you can go through an array of information on the seven inch digital gauge cluster, a 12.3 when you go up the tier, the same thing with the 10 inch heads up display as well as a digital rear view mirror. This is auto dimming and we get a moon roof. Over here, it's gonna be more firm, slides open and you have a little storage tray that you can pick up and it's a deep storage pocket with a 12 volt. Whereas on the Grand Highlander, it's more or less the same here, just deeper and wider with the driving mode select here, leather wrap steering wheel, multi-function, and the gauge cluster on this is a 12.3 digital reader that can be configured. So when you click and hold, you can change both sides and this will clean it up to the design that you want it to be laid out. And you can do this for three different sections. The Platinum will also get a heads up display in a digital rear view mirror. This is an auto dimming rear view mirror with a large pano moon roof, headroom, and leg room. As you can tell, it's a lot more wide and a lot more tall. We have the JBL sound system. This one has 10 speakers found throughout. Dashboard and door panel integrate in together and for your heated steering wheel and to open the lift gate. It's going to be soft where it needs to be, one touch up and down for the windows with a long storage pocket with a beverage holder carved out. Whereas on the Highlander, you have the same layout. It just doesn't integrate in together the same, but it's going to be soft to touch where it needs to be, one touch up and down for the windows and the same size storage pocket with six speakers standard. For the second row in the Highlander headroom, it's actually carved out for you with the air vents that's going to hit you right in the head. Leg space, we get storage behind both of the front seats and you can slide these forward. Make it a little bit easier for the back seat occupants and you can slide it back. And because they're captain seats, you know, you can recline these all the way back in which you can just relax. You got the little arm part here for your armrest, cup holders, storage kind of, two USB ports, third climate control setting, manual sun shades and the door is going to be soft where it needs to be with a long storage pocket. A total of 14 cup and beverage holders are found throughout. As for the Grand Highlander headroom and leg room, it's more wide, same storage behind both of the front seats. This one has the bench. Home plug, USB, heated rear seats, manual sun shades, air vents in the ceiling, and a longer door handle that's soft, a couple little storage pockets here, and because the door is longer, the bottom is going to have more storage space. Sliding into the center with the bench, you're going to have plenty of feet space. Butt, leg, shoulder, and knee space is not going to be an issue, nor is headroom. But here's where it's gonna be a little bit more tight. Slide it back, and that's the opening that you have for the Highlander, whereas on the Grand Highlander, you have a lot more width to get in. Going into the Highlander, you have a little area to step, and because these are captain seats, it's not gonna be so 
bad. We're gonna fold this all the way back and that's going to be the leg space with it pushed to the max. Headroom, I got the seats reclined, so I'm actually against this little area here. Cup holders on both sides. And sliding into the center, it's actually gonna be very tight. It can't really fit. So it really doesn't matter if you have a bench or you can figure the captain seats if you're six foot three. And the entrance to the Grand Highlander with the bench. Slide this back. We're gonna give it a little bit of space forward so that way you can see the difference. Leg space and leg space. Cup holders, you're gonna have a total of three on both sides with a USB port, air vents in the ceiling, larger window, and look at my headroom with the seats all the way back. I'm not actually hitting anything here. Sliding into the center, I have it setting up at that 90 degree. Now it's gonna be a little bit more compromised and the same thing with leg space. However, you could possibly fit three adults in the back if the seats are fully reclined in which you would have about the same cargo capacity as the standard Highlander. 265 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. Turn radius starts at about two and a part lane. Look at this baby. Gets up to speed fine. 6.5 inches less in length. It's not as wide as the Grand Highlander, but you're still getting eight inches of clearance. It doesn't necessarily feel that in the cabin, so I like the sporty feel that I'm getting out of the Highlander. It does feel a little bit more compact than the interior though, which makes it easier to get to your cell phone or the cup and bottle holders, because you actually get one more in this than the GH. And that's gonna take me to some pros and cons. And we're gonna start off with the pros on the Highlander. You have a sufficient amount of storage throughout each row. It is going to be a little bit tight for the third row, so that's a con. And if you really wanna use the third row, you're gonna lose some cargo capacity, which is another con, but you're getting 5,000 pounds of towing. So it's the same as the GH and you're getting a savings. And because it's not so long or wide, you can maneuver in and out. The steering has a little bit of weight to it, but because they're packing the same performance, I would not necessarily option this up and get the savings because that is really where another con lies with the Highlander itself. Feels light whenever you're pushing the brake hard or pushing the gas pedal. And when you're considering, we did lose 30 horsepower from the V6, but we gained over 40 pound feet of torque. Is this going to be sufficient for the Highlander? It is. It's just going to have some jerks here and there because of the turbocharge opposed to the naturally aspirated V6. I also like that we're getting the same towing capacity. Payload is still good. MPGs didn't really improve that much from the V6 to the four cylinder. But when you're considering the Grand Highlander, it's actually a bargain because you're only getting one MPG less than this. The sound deadening is not going to be as airtight as I would like. We do have upgraded wheels. You are feeling a little bit more imperfections in the road. The seat cushion is comfortable. I do like the captain seat configuration. But realistically speaking, that third row is going to be a little bit more cramped and cargo capacity. Let's see how the GH compares to it. And the Grand Highlander's turn radius is about three lanes. It's to be expected. And that's giving her a go. It feels a little bit more athletic only because it's so large. And when you get a larger vehicle that typically is going to happen. It will give you the feel that it has more power than it has. Let's rock and roll. It would have been awesome if they had the V6 here, especially if they would have done it like the Camry, giving it 301 horsepower. I think it would have just blew this vehicle out of the park. I like the Max Hybrid because you're getting a lot of horsepower and torque but then you're suffering with the MPGs. And when you go hybrid, that's usually what you're liking. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons, starting with the pros for the Grand Highlander. The extra length and width, it doesn't feel over the top. So you can get in and out of lanes without any issues. The steering is the same. It does feel wider though. And because you sit up higher, even though the clearance is the same, it just feels a little bit more dominant on the road. The interior, I think that they did a little bit better because it's more wide in the center console area. 
It's just where the con lies is both of the vehicles needed a full pass through. Another pro is the third row. You can fit adults back there. It's going to be a little bit tight, but if you configure the captain's seats, it's going to be a little bit better for three to fit back there. I wish the sound deadening was a little bit better than the Highlander because it's basically the same. And both vehicles are going to be getting a zero to 60 around the same. You're going to be around an eight second margin, which is nothing phenomenal. You're not expecting to get race car numbers in this type of vehicle. But if you want something quick, then you just option for the hybrid max and then it's going to be night and day difference. Another pro is optioning the GH opposed to the Highlander. You don't have as many trims. There's only three trims to choose from, whether you go the turbo or the hybrid powertrain. But the big problem for me is we lost the V6 in the Highlander and they should have just increased the horsepower and the towing capabilities. And then throwing the V6 here would have been a game changer. That's where the shortfall comes into play for the Grand Highlander. And thinking about rival perspective, all the Nissan variants are gonna tow more. All the Ford variants are gonna to tow more. All of the Kia variants are going to tow more. And I understand you're not buying this car specifically for towing. It's not meant to do anything off road. It's just when you're lowering the powertrain, you're wanting to give them a little bit more than just 40-ish pound-feet of torque more and matching all the specs to the V6 variant that we lost. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Gettle Stadium Toyota for giving us these two 2024 Toyota Highlander and the Grand Highlander for our comparison review.